Hey everyone, it's Vinny and welcome back to Best Bets. Technically last weekend we did have a positive top pick ROI with Catch a Wave paying over $7 last weekend in the Sunday finale at Tampa. But it was tough watching domestic product win the Tampa Bay Derby as our top pick without being able to wager on it. Just uh, just one of those things that just <laughs> hopefully that never happens again. Because that would have made for a very good weekend. Uh, he was like 9-5 to five before uh, before the totes went down. He's probably going to go off second choice based on the will pays uh, prior to the totes going down. So that was just, that was tough to swallow um, that we couldn't bet on domestic product. But we're staying in Florida. We're coming back to Gulfstream uh, for Saturday and Sunday. Let's get into it. Race number three on Saturday is the Hutchins Stakes and the number six Valiant Force. And he was my top pick last time, and he was my he's my top pick here today. He had all sorts of traffic issues last time out. Uh, as long as he doesn't hit traffic issues and have a terrible trip again, he's going to be tough to deal with. Yes, he's short on the morning line. He's seven to five on the morning line. But I think he looks very tough in this spot. The second choice, the number three B line. For Riley Mott looked really good on debut, but only has that debut effort to go on. A Valiant Force seems to be the class of this field. Hard to get away from, in my opinion. So I'm going to single this one on top. Might play a couple exactas, depending on how some of the others look in the paddock and everything. But really just going to stick with Valiant Force as a single on my tickets. Race number 10 is an allowance optional claimer going a mile on the dirt. And the number five, Arthur's Ride, is my top pick here for Bill Mott. He's had a tough issue, tough time really staying healthy. I uh, just can never seem to string a couple races in a row, uh, row together without having to take a long break. But when he does run, he runs good and he's shown improvement every single start when he does run. I uh, seven to two on the morning line here. He broke his maiden here at Gulfstream uh, in his three year old debut for Mott. I'm hoping that he continues to improve and can stay healthy and actually be like a decent like grade three type horse for Mott. I don't think he's going to he's anything super special, but he's definitely shown talent. I am also going to key the number one Cape Traglifar for Safi. I think he looks good. Horse doesn't like to win. He only has one win in 10 starts, but seven of those seven uh, others of those finishes have been finishing second or third. His races here at Gulfstream have all been very good and all I think are worthy of him at least hitting the money here. I'm hoping he's just better than the number six full screen, who is the nine to five morning line favorite. So I'm going to key the third choice here in Arthur's ride over the number one. And I'm going to hope I am right here because I think this exact if I'm right and we beat full screen, we'll probably pay around $14, uh, like 14 to one. Uh, in the win ticket on Arthur's ride, he'll probably pay between like 8 and $10, in my opinion, if those lines hold and there's not a ton of scratches here. Looking at Sunday's card, and the race number six is the Any Limit Stakes and the Safi Joseph duo here of the number four, Candy Gray, and the number six, R. Harper Rose, just look very tough. R. Har Harper Rose here, I would give the nod to as she... Uh, she won the grade three forward gal last time out going seven. So she is taking a little bit of a cut back, but because she likes to sit close to the pace, I don't think it's really going to affect her here today. Sias takes her again today uh, over the number four, Candy Gray, who he was on last time out. But Irad does pick up the mount for Candy Gray and Candy Gray went gate to wire last time and looked very good. I think there's a strong possibility these two could just go one, two all the way around. I'm just going to play these two in an exacta and use them on my multi-race tickets. Race number nine on Sunday is an allowance optional claimer going one mile in the dirt. And I'm very excited for the number five Scalia to be back for Bill Mott. She's the full sister of Tacitus. I loved her before her debut last year. Had her both times she won last year. She looked like a, a legit threat in that three-year-old Philly division. Unfortunately, she had a setback train, uh, training for the summer, and this is her first race back. 
But if she comes back the same or better, she's going to be very tough here. And the rest are running for second. I think she is a legit like grade one, grade two caliber horse if she can stay healthy. I'm hoping this is just a good starting point for her to start her four-year-old season. And we see her in some big stakes races for uh, the older fillies and mares down the line. I'm just going to play a win ticket on her and I'm just going to single her on all my multi-race tickets. I am hoping that she is, she's not bet down to like two to five or something like that. I'm, I'm hoping that because it's her first race off a layoff, we, we get at least like six to five. I'd even take four to five on a win ticket on her. I just think she's that good. So fingers crossed. She is that good and we can keep betting her throughout the year. Best of luck if you are playing Gulfstream Park on Saturday and Sunday, and I will see you next time.